Hi guys, this is Raj Sharma and in this session we will discuss OOPS concepts in .NET C Sharp. OOPS concepts in C Sharp object oriented programming. Using this concept we can organize entities and the object in a language. There are four key concepts of the OOPS. First one abstractions, second one encapsulation, third one inheritance and fourth one polymorphism. If a language means C sharp or any other modern language follow the OOPS concept then we can have the multiple benefits of that one. First one that language provides the modular approach. Modular approach means suppose you have a very complex task then you can divide that task in a different small task and we can create the class and object OOPS based language and the modular approach when we talk about the modular approach it means we divide the task in the different task and then as we can assign the different tasks to the different developers. This will make the maintenance and development easier. So as we discussed there are four key concepts in the OOPS. First one encapsulation, second one polymorphism, third one inheritance and final and fourth one abstractions. We will discuss all these concepts one by one. First of all we check encapsulation. Encapsulation means we can hide the data in an enclosure so that that data is not visible to the outside of the enclosure. As you can see in the example we have a capsule. In that capsule we have a medicine. So end user the content of the medicine or the medicine is not visible to the user. User can see only the shape of the capsule. The same way in a like C sharp language we can hide the some information some important information say variables methods so that those variables and methods are not accessible outside of the class. This is called the encapsulation. Now we take the another example of the real life. So there is a car. We can see the car. We can see the design of the car. We can see the model of the car and we can drive the car. But there is a complex part in the part that is the engine. And in engine there could be multiple parts. And each and every part has its own function. So those complex part has been hidden from the end user. As a driver, we can drive the car, but we cannot check which part of the engine is working what function. So hiding the complex part of the engine is called the encapsulation. Encapsulation. This is implemented by using the access specifier. What are the access specifiers? Using the access specifiers, we can decide the visibility and accessibility of the each and every methods and the variable. So as you can see in the diagram, we have the different type of the access specifiers. First one public, private, protected, internal and the protected internal. So we will discuss all these ones one by one. Now we check the access specifiers. The first one is the private. If we declare the variables or methods as a private, it means those variables cannot be accessed outside of the class. As you can see the diagram, private variable, private methods. These variables or methods can be accessed only within the body of the class. Second is the public. If we declare the variables or methods public, it means we can use this variable within the class and also outside of the class because these are the public. Next one is the protected. In case of the protected, if we declare the variable methods as the protected, so in that case only the members, only the friend class can access the protected members and protected methods. So we have a class A and class B and class B inherit the class A. So B is a friend of the class A. The class B can access the protected variables and methods from the class A. But the class C is an independent class and is not a friend of the class A. That's why class C cannot access the protected variables and methods from the class A. Next one is the internal. Suppose we have a package and in a package we can create a multiple classes. In a class if we declare some variable internal or methods then in another class say class B we can access these internal variables in class B because both class are in the same package or same assembly. Next one is the protected internal. In case of the protected internal suppose we have a two package package 1, package 2 and package we have the class 2, class, class A, class B. Another assembly or package or namespace is a class C 
and class A inherit the class A from the package 1. So in that case, class A from the package 1 and class C from the package 2 are the front class. So if you declare the variable protected internal, it means these variables can be accessed in the class C because class C and A are the front class. C class inherit the A. But class B, there is no protected internal methods or variable in the class C. So no methods and variable can be accessed in this C class C in the package namespace or assembly. Next concept, polymorphism. Poly means many, morph means forms. It means many forms. Or in other words, we can say single name and multiple many. So as you can see in the diagram, there is a person, but the person can act in a many forms. Like he is a father, so he takes care of his family. Then he goes to office. Also, he goes to for the shopping. So one person and many forms. So this is called the polymorphism. We check the another example of the real life vehicle. It's a generic and in the vehicle we have the different forms. Say two-wheeler, three-wheeler and four-wheeler. So this is the like example of the polymorphism. Type of the polymorphism. First one compile time or we can say static. Second one run time or we can say dynamic. So as you can see in the diagram polymorphism static or compile time. It means at the time of the compilation, the compiler will decide which function has to be called. When we create the multiple methods with the same name, but the number of parameters or data types of the parameter are different. So that case is the case of the methods overloading. Second one, dynamic or runtime. In this case, this is the case of the methods overriding. So we have two class and we write a function class A and then we write the same function, same name, same parameters in the second class A B and then we change the definition. So that is a case of the function methods overriding. The runtime will decide the which function has to be called from the superclass or the subclass. Methods overloading also called early binding or static binding. Next concept is the inheritance. Inheritance is a process in which one object acquires all the properties and behavior of its parent object automatically. It means, suppose we have a class A and class B. In class A, we have some methods or some variables and then we inherit that A class, class to B. Then class B will contain all, automatically all the methods or behavior of the class A. This is called the inheritance. The class A which is being inherited is called the base class, parent class or super class and the class B which inherits the class A that is called the derived class or subclass or child class. The types of the inheritance there are four types single, hierarchical, multi-level and multiple. In the C sharp multiple inheritance is not possible but we can achieve the multiple inheritance using the interface. Type of the inheritance we can check with this diagram. First of all single. In a single we have two class class A and B. This B class inherits the A. It means the B will contain all the property and methods from the class A. And A class is called the super class, base class or parent class for the class B. And class B is called the subclass or derived class or child class for the class A. Next is the multi-level. It means we can have the multiple classes. So right now, as you can see the diagram, we have the three classes. Class A, Class B and Class C. So, Class B inherits the Class A and Class C inherits the Class B. It means all the methods of the Class A, B will contain and C will contain the methods of the B and inherited methods from the Class A. So A class is the super class or base class. Again the B is the subclass or derived class for the class A. Also B class is also super class or base class for the class C. And finally C is the subclass or derived class for the class B. Next is the hierarchical. In hierarchical you can see we have four classes. Class A and B and C and D. These three classes 
inherit the class A. So A class is the base class for all these B, C and D. And B, C and D classes are the subclass for the class A. And the last one is the abstraction. The abstraction is very similar to the encapsulation. The purpose of the both is to hide the data. But there are some key differences between the two. We cannot create the instance of the abstract class. And in case of the abstract class, we declare the abstract methods. So abstract methods have only the signature. The definition or the body of the method is implemented by other class. When a class is declared sealed, then it cannot be inherited. But in case of the extra class, it cannot be declared as a sealed class because extra class is always inherited in other class. So guys, this was all about the OOPS concept in the C-Sharp. Thanks for watching the video.